Beginning from today and for the next months until uh, June 2021, we are hosting five academic experts from South Korea, the United Arab Emirates, Zimbabwe, Bra Brazil and Turkey, who are going to explain and analyze the processes of nation bu building in the countries of their expertise. Our first uh, meeting is about nation building in North Korea from the establishment of the DPRK until today. We have the pleasure and the honor to host Dr. Sung Kyung Choi, re research professor at the University of North Korean Studies in Seoul, live. She is with us. And I uh, we welcome her. Um, um, we are very happy to host you, Doc Dr. Choi. Before we begin with the lecture and the discussion which follows, I would like to give the floor for a short note uh, to Professor Avi Bar-Eli, the head of our uh, team here uh, on, on Ben Gurion Political Thought and, and Senior Fe Fellow at the Ben Gurion Institute for the Study of Israel and Zionism. Professor Bar-Eli, the floor is yours. Hello all. Uh, our, our guests and our uh, members of the research hub. Uh, we are delighted to open the, this series of uh, research uh, lectures on uh, nation buildings in various places in, uh, in, the, in of the world. We, um, we welcome uh, Dr. Choi, and we are wait, we 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 are looking forward to hear you today and to uh, use your insights and, 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 and insights from the uh, coming lectures for our own purposes, our own, own selfish purposes, meaning understanding uh, the, the uh, process of nation, the Israeli process of nation building. Welcome. Thank you very much. And I would like to give the floor now to Professor Paula Caballo, the director of the, the Ben Gurion Institute for the Study of Israel and Zionism, for her remarks. Thank you, Gabriel. Uh, can you hear me, all of you? Yes. Good. So uh, I'm delighted that we're starting this uh, series. We've been, um, in fact, dreaming about it, I have to say, for the last three years since we started this uh, very special group the Ben-Gurion uh, Political Thought Research Hub at the Azrieli Center for Israel Studies. Um, we were talking about the importance of having, exchanging the, the perspectives on nation building and uh, reaching outside of the uh, crossing, I would say, geopolitical barriers and reaching out of the Israeli uh, polit uh, Israeli uh, bo uh, uh, demarcation lines of thought and uh, and uh, political understanding. It's it's been clear to us that we really have to share uh, with others uh, our thoughts and questions. So um, this is a very special moment for us, but it's only the opening accord to what I hope will become a long-lasting collaboration with uh, all the participants of this series with you, Dr. Choi, um, and with you, Dr. Marowa, I see you're here as well, and uh, with others in this uh, series. And I really hope that this series will become uh, uh, an opening accord to um, exchange of ideas and perhaps exchange of scholarship and collaboration and joint scholarship uh, between our institutions. So uh, thank you for agreeing to join us in this journey and we're looking forward to hear all of you. Thank you very much. So before we start with the lecture, I would like to tell to the audience on, fa on Facebook Live who watch us right now that they can write their questions on the chat. And during the discussion that will fo follow, we are going to discuss their, que their questions as well. So stay with us. Uh, now it's the time for the lecture. Dr. Sun Kyung Choi is a research professor at the Simeon Institute of the University of North Korean Studies, where she joined after obtaining her PhD in North Korean stu Studies in 2018. She published articles about cross-border connections between North Korea and China, 
and how nation be building in North Korea is presented by the media of North, of North Korea. Dr. Choi, the floor is yours. Thank you, Gabriel, for introducing me and thank you for giving me this opportunity. And I'm Songgyang Choi, working at the University of North Korean Studies and teaching at the Dokseong Women's University recently. And today I'm going to talk about past and present of North Korea in terms of nation building. So can you see my slides now? Okay. Mm -hmm. So when you think about North Korea, what comes to your mind? Maybe these images are the stereotypes of what you have heard of and seen through the lens of media and scholarly works as well. So North Korea has been known as an extreme case of isolation and even mystery. And most of the representations of North Korea have largely produced uh, the monolithic idea of totalitarian state and its oppressed people. And in the similar vein, uh, as, as Hader Smith pointed out, scholarly analysis also have framed it as mad in the sense of being irrational and as bad in the sense of the motivation for policy being ascribed to normatively unacceptable characteristics of the state and its leadership. So also dominant op approach of media coverage toward North Korea has focused on potential use of military force and nuclear weapons. And this presentation redirects attention to North Korea as it is and argues the importance of questioning the general stereotypes that frame North Korea as hermit kingdom by tracing the trajectory of its nation building. In doing so, I challenge one, one dimensional approach as brutal regime and uh, provides an, an alternative pro approaches by highlighting North Korea as a nation state. And for this, I will look through the process of nation building in North Korea by four keywords here. And I first explore historical backgrounds, including the context of ethnic division in Korea and the formation of Chuche ideology, and then examine the current shifts in North Korea, such as official discourse uh, on nation and reunification and the major changes of socialist construction in the Kim Jong-un era. So historically, North Korean nationalism emerged as an ideology of anti-colonial struggle and this fight against the Japanese empire in turn reinforced Sorry. And this fight against the Jap Japanese Empire in turn reinforced Korean nationalism based on a shared belief of ethnic homo homogeneity and desire for an independent Korean as a nation state. However, national division thwarted this illusion of ethnic unity and created the incongruences in the political and ethnic dimensions of Korean nationhoods. So Korea failed to make a sole uh, state in the nation building process, but, and- Sorry, professor, I've just stopped your mm -hmm. sharing because there was mm -hmm. a technical problem with it. Could you please uh -huh. share again? And we will see maybe if now it will, if it will be shown for everyone. Mm -hmm. So now you can now yes okay so yeah. now okay. people are it works. seeing this okay thank, thank you. you thank, thank you. you sorry and the legacies of this anti-colonial nationalism and cold war ideological confrontation formed two critical pillars in nation building of north korea and first anti-japanese armed struggle led by Kim Il-sung became a valuable political resource in North Korea and which allowed 
him to be portrayed as national liberator and hero and permitted him to claim to the legacy of uh, pure ethnic Korean na nationalism. The establishment of his Democratic People's Republic of Korea thus has its origins in anti-imperialist struggles. And in time, this developed into anti-Americanism as the United States emerged as a new imper imperialist enemy with the outbreak of the Korean War in 1950. So North Korea has constructed antagonism toward the US as a cornerstone of its state building. And second, uh, North Korea has maintained its legitimacy by competing with South Korea regimes. And the post-1945 division created the problem of who should and would represent Korean nation and who has the political legitimacy. So both Koreas rec reconstructed peculiar links between ethnicity and the state, and which otherwise would have resulted in a loss of political legitimacy. So the legacies of anti-colonialism and competition over, over uh, legitimacy based on the belief of homogeneity have entailed in inter-ethnic conflicts and the establishment of us versus them mindsets over half a century. And this situation sits in stark contrast to the conventional wisdom that ethnic unity produces peaceful coexistence. So the post-colonial nation building interwoven with the uh, Cold War constituted the national discourse in North Korea with confrontations between the Korean nation and the enemy of the nation, which is United States. So this is Picasso's masterpiece of Shinchun Massacre and Massacre of civil, Civilians were committed by the US and South Korean military forces in the period of October to December, 1950. So since the liberation of Korea in 1945, North Korea has fought against imperialist uh, forces and regarded America as the first enemy and the impact of the Korean War were severe at the time and over 50% of the North Korean cities were destroyed and everyday lives became devastated and in particular the chemical warfare conducted by the US Air Forces were enough to leave North Koreans with bitter memory of hatred toward America and this became a decided, decisive historical moment in creating North Korean nationalism. And furthermore, the North Korean regime has widely distributed um, propaganda about Shinchon massacre and stimulating people's collective memory of, of the Korean War and crit criticizing American imperialist brut brutality. And this process, the regime has strengthened those Koreans' hostility against the U.S. through education. For example, um, this is the Shincheon Massacre Museum. Here has been used as a, an effective site of education to remind North Koreans of the war and American enemy. As you see here, the whole museum represents how U.S. soldiers soldiers are cruel and this shaped the collective memory of the war. And the authorities reported that over 30,000 30, people were massacred by US forces over uh, 50 days. And this number was exaggerated though, but uh, this is the, yeah. This is the, one, one of the examples how regime taught North Koreans. And also uh, the regime has utilized anti-Americanism to block the infiltration of foreign culture and imperialist thoughts, as well as the influx of capitalist elements after the economic crisis in the mid nineties. But the earlier criticism of the United States has decreased in the Kim Jong-un era. 
And back then in the Kim Il-sung era, Marxist, Rainist, Rainism were ruling uh, principles of his early, early regime. But in the process of power struggle of, after the death of Stalin, Kim Il-sung presented Juche ideology and Juche has been developed as a ruling ideology from 1960s onwards, meaning that uh, self-identity and self-reliance. And the idea of Juche in its early days reflected nationalistic response to the imperialism. The focus was enhancing the people's awareness of the need to secure independence from outside forces. And also Kim Il-sung and his followers sought to defend their dictatorship by blocking criticism from both Moscow and Beijing. And thus the Juche ideology was kind of diplomatic strategy uh, to assure its independence between the two communist giants. And Kim Il-sung was invited to the 10th anniversary of the Pandun conference and he gave speech at Ali Arham Social Science Institute in 1965. And his, his speech outlined the basic principles of Juche and making his declaration that DPRK is based on Juche in ideology, independence in politics and self-reliance in economy and self-defense in national defense. And on the one hand, Juche ideology Juche ideology paved the road to the foundation to follow the path of independence. On the other hand, it reinforced the sole leadership of the power monopoly of Kim Il-sung. And let's move on to the Fisher discourse on nation and reunification. And we can see here the notion of nation has been in tandem uh, with the development of the Juche ideology as well. Originally, the nation, Minjuk in Korean, the concept originated from Stalin's theory of nation. But however, since uh, 1970s, North Korea started to emphasize the blood relations of the Korean people effacing the regional concept of Stalin's one. And since in, interestingly, when we look through the changes of definition on nation here, since 1973, the dictionary, dictionary included bloodline as, the, as an element that defines nation. And since, since 1985 here, bloodline has been located on the top of the list. And this definition has been maintained throughout the present. So even today, vinification proposals issued by both Koreas are based on quasi primordial mordial belief that uh, Korean nation is unitary nation and that this promise uh, premise will inevitably lead to national vinification and in 19, in 2018, three inter-Korean summits took place within six months. And it, at this particular juncture, uh, ethno-nationalism emerged valuable as a unifying force in both, in both the North and the South. And in fact, the uh, reunification discourse in both in the Panmunjom Declaration and Pyongyang Joint Declaration are based on national reconcil reconciliation. And, and this part is, this is part of declarations and these phrases looks like uh, reunification should be achieved in primordial, primordial ways. And as you can see here, the term blood relations and the spirit of the Korean nation here. So, and also the independence of Korean nation was mentioned in both declarations as another principle of, for reunification. So similarly, uh, Kim Jong-un's 
Kim Jong-un regime has employed two veins of discourse uh, on nation. Uh, one is Kim Il-sung Minjo, uh, which means the, uh, this, this notion demands the boundary between uh, independent nation in the North and semi-colonial nation in the South, and uh, which was emerged uh, in, from the mid nineties with the death of Kim Il-sung and Joseon Min-jok. Joseon Min-jok is emphasizing the homogeneity, homogeneity of the two Koreas. And while Joseon Min-jok, the Korean nation, refers to the uni unitary nation of the identical bloodline, language, and culture. But the term Kim Il-sung Min-jok, Kim Il-sung nation identifies Kim Il-sung as the father of the nation. So which reveals that the independence from the imperialist power. And so, yeah. So ethnic nation or independent state or both, uh, and that's the problem and that's the matter. And what is North Korea pursuing today? And what is the blueprint of the country now? So North Korea is changing now and uh, we can discuss the changes in Kim Jong-un era by comparing with the previous regime here. And North Korea's monolithic idea of Suryong system is continued in Kim Jong-un era. However, significant changes are captured in Kim Jong-un era. And the regime keeps on promoting socialist construction for nation state building and Father Kim's guiding strategy was military first and powerful and prosperous state. And, and Son Kim's one is Saiju uh, Mumyeonggu, which means civilized and powerful state. And for both regimes, improvement of people's livelihood and economic development have been very crucial for no, socialist construction. Here, Kim Jong-il prioritized the People's Army and granting it the highest economic and resource allocation priority. And more importantly, a military first policy aimed at building a powerful and prosperous state based on military strength. And this idea for enhancing the benefits of the people is further elaborated in pursuit with socialist civilization in the Kim Jong-un era and uh, people first and our state first were advocated uh, in series instead of our, our nation first, which was implemented in 90s to recreate tradition for the legitimacy of the regime. So in Kim Jong-il era, the military first was proposed as a ruling strategy to build a powerful and prosperous state, and which means a unique style. The military first means the unique style of politics aimed at undertaking a revolution and construction based on the army strength. And in this process, the revolutionary soldier spirit was further stressed as a driving force for uh, social construction in order to build, build a powerful state. And Kim Jong-il impl implemented Kang Song Daegu in 1998. And this phrase signifies the intention to transform North Korea into a powerful state. And this ruling uh, this course emerged in response to double-headed crisis over uh, the collapse of the socialist blocs, the severe food crisis in the mid 90s and the death of Kim Il-sung. So therefore the military first and the Kang Song Daegu and Son Gun and Kang Song Daegu were developed to, de develop to overcome these crises that North Korea was faced with at the time. And powerful state resonated in Kim Jong-un era, but the discourse is represented in different ways and building a civilized 
socialist power in Kim Jong-un era means a country where uh, socialist culture develops in a comprehensive way and where the people possess a high level of creativity and culture. And to make this happen, it is important to make all the people powerful builders of socialism and who have a wealth of knowledge and high cultural attainments and provide them with uh, proper conditions and environment. So the regime explains that civilized way of lifestyle is new era's demands and mentioning that they would no longer need to tighten, up, tighten their belts and the regime will make people enjoy socialist prosperity. And overall, in the Kim Jong-un era, the economic development and improvement of people's livelihood are emphasized rather than military forces. And that is the discourse of, uh, of building a civilized socialist power is deeply related with the improvement of people's living standard based on light industry, pursuit of global trend and leaders pro people gesture and which is encapsulated as the people first principle. And also many construction projects in Pyongyang, such as apartment buildings, culture and leisure facilities are found with the modifier like uh, monumental creations and symbols of civilization. And interestingly, so-called socialist civilization pursue the ideas of, of world class and global trend. And for instance, when the Ma Xingyang ski leader here was completed in 2013, it was admired as a world class, world first class resort and, uh, in the country's youth broadcast. And North Korea's orientation toward the ideas of globally developed and world class can be explained through the socialist construction for their people. And these changes from military first to people first reveals a change of ruling strategy, which reflects the people's needs from the bottom. And Kim Jong-un's new strategy is for satisfying the country's growing middle class, as well as the young generation who are engaging in the progression of marketization, the inflow of foreign media and the border crossing to China as well. So that is Kim Jong-un regime uh, emphasizes people-centered policy and their economic improvement in order to meet people's needs and values from the bottom. And this changing social reality made crucial impact on uh, North Korean state building today. And Kim Jong-un's political power base has been established on the basis of voluntary agreement and mobilization from the public. And the, at the same time, North Korea attempts to redefine itself as a state asserting our state first. And in early uh, 2019, in January of the same year, Rodong Shimun, the official newspaper, posted the score and lyrics of song of a song, Our Flag. And in April of the same year, Our Flag, Our National Flag was performed in, the, in their people's assembly. And this reappearance of state and our state first uh, reflects the regime's desire to be a normal country. Then, how are the civilized way of life and the pursuit of normalization of the country represented? Recently, North Korean regime engenders more connected with, with the outside world, creating new images as a normal country. And Kim's, Kim regime is actively using the social media platforms such as uh, Facebook and Instagram, targeting audiences outside of the country. And uh, in Kim Jong-un era, many official social media accounts were opened and DPRK today here is one of them. And, and we can do likes and 
uh, leave comments and get back reply on the comments if lucky. And overall, the representations rely on images rather than text, and which which means these international platforms uh, target audiences outside of the country. And North Korea's imaginary toward the civilized and strong socialist state carries the visions of beauty and prosperity. And the posts on the social media display modern and splendid faces of both culture and leisure. And for example, the ski leisure then uh, ice links represent socialist culture, cultural lives uh, filled with a uh, beautiful and healthy living spirit in the most civilized conditions and environment, according to Rodong Shinmun, which is official newspaper. And also, you really innovated orchestra theater and night view of the scientist street feature the idea scenes of socialist power appealing to a distant public. And some of the posts on the DPRK today employ the discourse of socialist paradise and stressing the country's people-centered socialism and showing the happiness and prosperity of the people. And in addition, it up uploads images of everyday lives and sports events and visitors from abroad and which are there to remind audiences of the fact that ordinary lives are ongoing here as well. And um, in the country um, that has often been referred as closed or isolated. And to sum up the stories, why Kim Jong il regime employed top down strategy that benefits to people from above under the military first policy. But the Kim Jong un regime now has employed people first policy that embraces masses, which produces bottom up inter integration. And while Kim Jong il's powerful state uh, based on military first reflects the self protectedness to overcome the crisis. But Kim Jong-un's vision of powerful, powerful state based on the people first and, and its representation clearly reveals the confidence as a socialist state and showing that the country's developed urban, urban scape and people's happy lives. So the vision of the country not only reflects the changes in the North Korean society, but also the connectedness with the outside world so that people can imagine North Korea as part of the world or and as a normal country, but not colonized by it. At the intersection of globalization and socialist construction in the Kim Jong-un era, North Korea reflected the people's needs from the bottom, at the same time reshaped the idea and images of socialism. And this is the way that North Korea legitimizes its status as normal socialist country and reinforces the identity of North Korean style socialism on the world stage. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Choi. Uh, it has been a very uh, interesting uh, point of view of how North Korea sees uh, itself, DPRK sees itself, something that uh, it is very important for us to know. Uh, it's the first time that I encounter the uh, Juche uh, way of thinking and the Juche ideology in North Korea. Uh, now it's time for our for the discussion of uh, our first meeting. It is Professor Avi Barelli. Uh, you have ten, five to ten mi minutes more, more or less, and then we are we are going to continue with our discussion. Thank you, Dr. Choi. Uh, uh, for your illuminating uh, lecture. For us, uh, 
North Korea is a, is a remote place for us from, from our point of view. You are at the far, far east uh, from the point of view of uh, this Middle Eastern st uh, state, maybe better called, we, we will better uh, 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 see ourselves as Western Asian state. But anyway, it's, it's remote for us and uh, unknown generally. We only know uh, bits and pieces from uh, uh, journalistic uh, descriptions. It, it's very illuminating. We hope to, to use uh, uh, in, uh, insights from your uh, uh, lecture and maybe a discussion from the, di from the discussion in order for us to, to, to uh, get some insights for our own, uh, our own um, um, excuse me, our own um, um, uh, research concerning uh, Israeli nation building, which, which is the, the top, that, that's why we, 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 are, we invited you for, from our point of view, from our uh, research interests. Now, if I understand you correctly, Dr. Choi, you, are addre you addressed uh, the, the concept of nation building from, from, as, from a, a, a particular pers a broad but particular perspective of a, a, con a conception of collective identity, the conception of uh, the uh, communist Korea's uh, conception of, of a collective identity. And if I understand you correctly, at least up until now, uh, nowadays in North Korea, the basic uh, nature of this uh, conception of collect collective idea uh, uh, identity is co is a conflictual one, meaning that you are uh, the, the, the North Korean regime offered its citizens a, 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 a point of view of of a conflict, a constant conflict, beginning with the conflict uh, with Japan. Uh, early as early as 1910, then from 1945, the conflict with the USA. As major uh, uh, adversaries uh, that 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 define, in, in fact, defined the 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 collective identity of uh, of uh, North Korea along the lines of. Uh, and a legacy of anti-colonialism, firstly the Japanese one, and then the American one. Now, this uh, antagonistic pitch, uh, worldview, I would, I would say, is typical to communist regimes generally, but also to fascist regimes, like the, uh, the regimes in, in Italy, Germany, and, 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 and Spain. This uh, self-identification via Antago uh, 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 antagonistic relations with some foreign power, some neighbor or foreign power, superpower in the in, in the in the in the North Korean uh, case vis-a-vis -vis, uh, the USA. Now, this common base of communism and fascism fascism is 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 uh, is a striking similarity. One of the striking similarities between the, those two. A seemingly opposing uh, regimes. And I would uh, classify, from my point of view, uh, uh, the, the regime, the North Korean regime as a, as a fascist regime, no less than a, a communist regime, I would say. And, and the, the difference is, uh, is blurring here. But uh, communist regimes have had uh, some positive vision. Now, what is the positive vision of, of, of this, uh, 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 this, uh, this communist regime of, of North Korea? It, you use the term socialist prosperity. Now, if, you are, if we, are, we, we think about this concept and remember the famine in, in, during the mid, uh, 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 the mid 90s, the, the, the horrible, the, you called it the uh, economic uh, crisis. It's a, it was a calamity, uh, no less than a calamity 
of uh, of mass de de destruction of of this of this society. So, so and 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 in this context, uh, you you uh, uh, you didn't you haven't addressed you haven't addressed uh, uh, the continuing political mass persecution uh, uh, political mass perse persecution in in, uh, in in North Korea, including the the concentration camps, uh, mass killings. And 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 uh, you know better than me, more than me about all those uh, uh, horrible uh, political uh, 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 atrocities. What what are the ramifications of this persecution, continued persecution on North Koreans' uh, 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 nation building, or if you if we we narrow ourselves to the conception of collective identity? Has it nothing to do with it? Uh, now, from, it seems to me that you offer, you offer uh, uh, the, the, the positive uh, vision that you offer for, for understanding uh, uh, the, the, the construction of collective identity in North Korea is, uh, you, you call it a pure a sense of a, a conception of pure ethnic nationalism. But, it is not always the case that 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 the cornerstone of ethnic nationalism is uh, so is so conflictual. Now it seems that this ethnic nationalism, uh, the Korean, the North Korean ethnic or communist uh, Korea, Korean North uh, ethnic nationalism, is all about war. It's all about war. The, the, the main the con the, the, the main theme of this ethnic nationalism is 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 a, is a, is, a, is a violent conflict violent violent conflict uh, and, and, but so you we we are left with some general uh, uh, concept uh, abstract com concept uh, uh, such, such as socialist prosperity or um, socialist civilization or the uh, if you are if we go uh, ahead in time to Kim Jong-un era, uh, the, people's, the people first uh, concept, but, but, but we are left, these are abstract concepts. What are the political, educational, cultural, social horizons, positive horizons of this ethnic national, uh, nationalism? Uh, 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 I think, this is my impression, and uh, please consider my my what what I'm saying here as a long uh, a question, not more than a long question, because I'm ignorant uh, uh, in 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 the history of uh, North Korea and not only the very basic facts about it. So all I'm saying is uh, it's something that should be considered as a long question addressed to you. But it seems as a, I'm, I'm saying it as a question. It seems as if the main perspective of this uh, of of the of Korea of North Korea's uh, um, uh, nation building, especially uh, constructing of, co of some collective identity, is a, a belligerent one. It's a belligerent. It's a belligerent conception of uh, identity. Always uh, uh, engage in some conflict with some horrible enemy. Uh, you 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 use the term um, uh, us versus them, but if but but more as part of the time the the them in this uh, in this uh, in this uh, uh, phrase are Koreans are the South Koreans are part of those them that we are we we define ourselves as versus them, so this uh, makes someone wonder whether this ethnic nationalism is only a, a tool in the hands of the regime. Because if it all, it's, it's also uh, used as, as opposing, as to, for some uh, uh, so opposition between the North and the South, the, the, main, uh, so it, the main thing here is, uh, is, uh, is, the, is the belligerent de definition and not some mutual nationality. 
I want to, to sum up my, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm concluding, of course. Um, I think from our point of view, uh, the, the, the North Korean example is, an, is, a, is, a, is a good sign, is a good uh, exempli exemplification of the fact that a genuine na a, a democratic nationalism cannot be solely or primar primarily antagonistic. It should, it, it must, in its own logic, must be anchored in some positive uh, vision. And, uh, and our example, that's my final uh, uh, note, uh, Gabriel, our example is striking in this sense because Jewish nationalism generally is immersed with, with, in conflict. From its, in, in, its inception, uh, it, is, it, it is immersed, in, it, you name it, the 20s, the 30s, the 40s, of course, the, the, the decades after the establishment of the state are immersed in conflict. In a, in, in, a, in a violent conflict, uh, uh, to, you, to, to be correct. And still, and, and you can all also add that the Jews generally, uh, uh, across, all across, all across its, their, their history, uh, uh, were characterized in an, history, in an antagonistic history. They were, they've, had, they've had ongoing antagonistic relations in, with their, their surroundings. And still, if we are, if we are uh, 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 thinking about uh, Jewish nationalism, it's not all about war. You cannot understand it only in terms of, conf of our conflict with the Arabs. If, we, if you do such, uh, uh, if you are trying to understand it in such a way, such a one-sided way, you will be lost. You won't understand Jewish nationalism if you understand it also in conflictual uh, uh, terms. Now, my concluding question is for you. Is it the case with, the no with North Korea? Is it true that what my, is my, my impression that North Koreans uh, 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 collective, uh, North Korean uh, collective identity is uh, uh, primarily antagonistic, true. That's my final question for you, Dr. Choi, and thank you again for your lecture. Uh, thank you, uh, Professor Baraeli, uh, Dr. Choi, with your answers, and then we will start with the discussion. Uh, we are all waiting to uh, listen to your views after the discussion. Thank you. Well, thank you very much for your discussion and comments. Yes, I approached North Korea, uh, North Korea as a nation state and focusing on the concept of uh, collective identity. And particularly, I also mentioned that the anti-Japan anti-Japanese struggles and anti-Americanism afterwards. And the legacy of the anti-colonialism are ongoing in North Korea, even now. And the rhetoric of the anti-colonialism is uh, continue, continuing in that country. And uh, Professor, Barely man also mentions the um, also uh, talk about the comparison between communism and fascist regime and in this point I think uh, North Korea is uh, initially initially North Korea regime in Kim Il Sung era pursued the uh, communist values such as um, Marxist, Marxist, Leninist, and etc. But um, afterwards, the Kim, uh, in since the 1960s, I think, in my opinion, Kim Il Sung more pursued uh, the way of Juche, which means the nationalistic idea, and Juche means. I also mentioned that Juche was 
initially the one of the uh, kind of uh, diplomatic strategy uh, to be independent from Soviet Union and China as well. And then maybe from the United States and, and now on. And, uh, and Professor Ballerly also, also mentioned that uh, um, socialist prosperity and uh, civilization, the, the idea, idea and the vision of the, the country is, uh, is, is very kind of illusion, but I think the, maybe every country have, has its own blueprint and maybe Kim, uh, yeah, North Korea also can have a, the kind of uh, idea uh, landscapes and urban scape of the country and they can dream it as well, I, I think. And, but it, it, it could be very, it could be compared with the, uh, maybe, yeah, it, it also reminds us of the great famine in the mid nineties, but maybe I think North Korean regime and the, its leader doesn't want to repeat that, yeah, the kind of disaster and they are trying to, so they are trying to be one of the normal country, normalization of the country now. And um, yeah, so, and, and my discussant also mentioned the human rights issues. And in that point, I wanna add my opinion, uh, I think, there are political persecutions and also mass killings are existing today, but I think the mobilization from the bottom is not only controlled by violence. And um, in my opinion and experiences with the in this interviews with North Korean refugees in South Korea, they agreed their uh, regimes and and they, they kind of, I, I could capture that those kinds of voluntary agreements from the bottom, yeah. So I can say that not all of them are um, resisting against their regime and Many of them are pro regime and pro uh, government government people uh, when they are residing when they were residing in that in the in North Korea and and you mentioned you also mentioned that ethno nationalism are is always engaging in violent conflict and. And 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 the, those kinds of uh, ethno nationalism um, never exist never exist uh, without enemy and and North Korea have reinforced us versus them mindsets and but but I but these days. I can say um, maybe we can set the starting point as the Pyeongchang Olympic Games in uh, 2018. North Korea's criticism toward South Korea, both South Korea and United States uh, uh, decreased dramatically. And, and their criticism was always toward um, Toward the conservative parties in the South, not all of the all of the, uh, the South Koreans, and yeah, that's right. At their ethnic nationalism serves for their regime and their kin. Mm. But mm, and this is the yeah their 
unique political hmm, distinctiveness and um, yeah, and the last week and uh, my discussant uh, asked the collector collective identities antagonistic towards surrounding countries in con surrounding surrounding su surrounding countries. Mm, yeah, the collective identity of North Korea maybe um, I don't know the you are you are you are mentioning whether you are mentioning the regime or the people, but um, for now I I I I refer to the regime of course. The regime of course, yeah. If you are if you mean the regime, yes, they are quite antagonistic towards their surrounding countries, but um I'm not the I'm not I'm neither I, I'm neither historian nor political scientist, but I can say they are doing their best to survive in the yeah in the in the in the in the world. I think because their surroundings not was have been always. Um, uh, very, um, their surroundings weakened their, uh, the, the country and uh, sanctioned the regime. And uh, so I, I think, well, this is the, maybe this is the story about the survivor story of the regime, but um, yeah, I, but that was that happened the way of the way of uh, way of survivor in this yeah world. So so maybe the mm, I hope yeah. Okay, thank you very, very much. Uh, you 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 don't have to answer everything now because we mm -hmm. have also other things to uh, uh, ask and so that we can uh, di di discuss. So I have a, a practical qu question ab about the uh, university you are. It is very impressive that, you're, that, that, you're, that the university that you are is uh, uh, specialized only on, in North Korea. And uh, my question is practical and uh, methodological. Um, uh, given that North Korea is an isolated place, uh, difficult to uh, get in touch with, difficult mm -hmm. to know what's going on there. And what we know now, I saw that they have some uh, accounts on uh, Facebook that uh, the regime shows that it is a very nice place to live and. Uh, uh, have a good life. Uh, how uh, do you collect, not you only, but also all the faculties that you have in the university you are, how do you collect your information from North Korea and, uh, ex and especially uh, how do you get an insight which is not through the, fi through the filter of the regime? This is one part of the question. The second part of the question is uh, what Avi Barelli asked all, also in his way, uh, what is the vision of uh, North Korea? And since uh, North Korea and South Korea, I see ma many similarities what is happening in the area of my expertise in Cyprus, North Cy northern part of Cyprus and Cyprus in the south. At least in Cyprus, the, Repu the Republic of Cyprus and the administrative entity in the north, uh, head and, and recognized by uh, Turkey, they have a common ground to talk about. They have a parliament, mm -hmm. they have elections, they have an open mar mar market economy. 
On the contrary, we have Juche in the north and in the south, it's a parliamentary democracy of the West and another economy, other in the north, other in the south. Fortunately, I saw that they have, that you have ag agreed that you have a, the same bloodline, which is, I think it was so uh, uh, obvious that you should not agree upon that. It's a fact. But uh, uh, if the vision is the unification, then which model are they discussing about that the new Korea, the reunified Korea will uh, uh, have and will accept? Uh, this is a question so, so that it might answer also uh, the um, uh, thought uh, that uh, Professor Barelli said about the vision. Juche wants to come to the South or Western democracy wants to come to the North? Are they discussing it about it or not? These are my two uh, points that uh, I would like to, from you to uh, have an idea what's going on. If uh, Paula, uh, Prof Professor Caballo wants to add her question just be be before she leaves because she has to leave our meeting at two o'clock, uh, five past two. Uh, I give the floor also to her and then uh, to you, uh, Dr. Cho in Seoul. Thank you, Gabriel. Just a very quick, uh, uh, a very quick question mark and which in fact echoes the last part of your comment, Gabriel, and that's about the bloodline. Um, I, I would like to hear more about the role of the bloodline as uh, perhaps the common denominator, the bloodline in, in the national, I would say, sentiment or in the national consciousness as some kind of a, I don't know, a common denominator perhaps between the two Koreas. And to what extent this bloodline is also linked with a historical narrative? Is the bloodline also telling a story that both Koreas are still, to still agree uh, uh, around, could still gather around? Thank you. Uh, thank, thank you for your questions. And uh, I will answer, answer the professor, yeah, Paula Gracia's yeah, question. And uh, about the role of blood in the yeah sentiment, um, yeah we have all, yeah of course we have a uh, historical narrative here. Uh, in for example, um, the mountain back to I don't I don't know whether you have heard of it. The mountain back to is understood as the background of the both Korea's uh, myth mytho-historical derivation from a common ancestor called Tangun. And basically in every Korea, Korea and people uh, in both South and North uh, are educated these kinds of history. And, um, but yeah, but uh, in the people level, the level of people, not everybody agree with this idea. We are the one blood, we have the one bloodline and identical bloodline. And uh, and as, as Gabriel mentioned as well, and in now, for now, South Korea has the multicultural backgrounds, many, Korean Chinese are living here and including and Korean Americans and, and, and other, other marriage migrants are residing in the rural area as well. So, um, so uh, when we look at the yeah, cultural backgrounds in both Koreas, uh, South Korea, is more like the multicultural basis, but but many North Koreans says like they didn't 
uh, see any uh, foreign, foreigners in their country. So, and moreover, North Korean regime edu uh, um, emphasized the um, rate, uh, maybe they, they, uh, uh, they don't, uh, they don't agree with the globalization. I mean, they they think the globalization is the threat of the yeah, world. So they are very kind of isolated, they are maintaining a kind of isolated attitude toward the other races and ethnic groups as well. And so, but the bloodline maybe many North Korean people are believing the, the North and the South are the identical blood relationships, but... Okay, okay. yes, yeah. <laughs> it is about the blood uh, connect. So they have agreed that there is a blood root, a common mm -hmm. black blood, blood, blood root. Uh, yeah. What about the political unification? Are they discussing political... about it? Do they have a, a vision for a common and reunified uh, South and North Korea, or a, it is just a, a subject that they are going to talk about it in the future, if in the future? Maybe, yeah, we are studying many cases like yeah, uh, Eastern and Western Germany and uh, Gabriel also mentioned the Cyprus and Turkey cases here, but uh, we don't have any unified and I identical and sole vision of the one new Korea, and we don't have any dominant uh, opinions so, about this. So I hope so it that, is too early for that. Yeah. So it mm -hmm. is too early for that. And, sure. and practically, how do you collect your information from the north? If 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 you can sum, sum, summarize in a small uh, uh, time, because we do not have some much time. Yeah, uh, we collect the we we read the the raw materials. We collect the raw materials from our. Uh, library and they uh, import, they buy the, those kinds of uh, North Korean raw material from from Chinese, Korean Chinese especially. Uh, so you get mm -hmm. your, your uh, material through China? Yes. And what mm -hmm. about Basically. the insight? What about the insight facts? I mean, in internet, the, it's the intranet in, the, in, in North Korea. Internet you have in the South, you don't communicate with them? Internet? Oh, we don't. Basically, we, it is illegal to communicate with North Koreans for South Korea. And, uh, and basically, the North Korean website, all, the, all of the North Korean websites it are blocked in the South Korea because of the national sec security law. And some, some Koreans like me connect the, to the website through alternative routings. Mm -hmm. We have uh, so, our ways. Mm -hmm. so, you, so you do have your ways to talk with the mm -hmm. North. Okay. But, basically, but basically the Instagram and Facebook are open to South Koreans as well. So yeah, we can approach and access the, those kinds of information but we mm. cannot con con contact contact uh, North Korean directly or indirectly it's illegal in South Korea because okay. of the security mm -hmm. thank you so now we uh, continue with the second round uh, uh, Nathan Aridan uh, you have you have uh, the, you are on, on on the floor and then it's uh, Omri Dinur both uh, fellows in uh, at the Israeli uh, Center for Israel Stu Studies. Uh, please, uh, Nathan, it's your turn. Thank you very much. It was fascinating. And um, my, uh, many of the questions I wanted to ask have been asked and answered. But the question I always have is that sometimes the context 
before 1910 with a special agreement. What was the state in Korea? For instance, there's, there's always been a discussion in the world about Tibet, whether ever Tibet was an independent country. And I think we often lack the, the context. And the idea of being isolationist was way before, just like China. China was forced open. Japan was forced open in 1854 by Commodore Perry. So um, Korea didn't have a choice. But the interesting thing I would like to ask is, were there differences between people in the North and the South in their various different points of view? And when it comes to communication, as we talked about bloodline, etc., um, the interesting thing is the relations with Japan, relations with China, relations with Russia. To what extent has this played or will continue to play an influence? Thank you very much. Um, sorry, the in internet connection excuse me, was not... Excuse me, excuse me. <laughs> and uh, Omri did the Nur so that we will complete the second round and but then you answer, okay? Gabrielle, but Gabrielle, she is saying that she could not hear Nathan's question well, so... Mm -hmm. Ah, so could Nathan so, repeat uh, his question? I'll, I'll, do it, I'll do it very, very quickly, Apresi. I was asked, can you hear me? Yes. Um, okay, okay, I was asking about the, as Korea, uh, before 1910, uh, was it a unified country? We tend mm -hmm. to automatically assume that it was, but that's something I was asking. And the influence of Russia, China, and Japan on, on Korea before the 1910 special constitution. Thank you. And uh, Omri Dinur? Yes. Thank you. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. So, uh, following uh, Professor Barelli's uh, comment, uh, I would like to ask about the idea of uh, North Korea as a socialist paradise, as you mentioned, uh, in the sense that it described a positive uh, ambition for uh, creating a utopia which is something that uh, happens in uh, all kinds of cases of uh, new, new nations or building of new nations. Uh, but in fact, at the end, are mostly a nationalistic, uh, you know, totalitarian uh, fascist uh, regime, which turn out to be uh, dystopian. Now, my interest is about the question whether this has to do with the split between the North and the South in the sense that the North or the Kim, uh, you know, uh, Il-Sung uh, ideology uh, is to create this kind of so-called utopia, whether in the South, they had no interest in, you know, presenting uh, an utopian ambition uh, as a positive like ideology or any kind of, you know, uh, um, central ideology to the state, to the new state, uh, in any case. So that can be an explanation for the split between the North and the South. Okay, so first we start with a, a question uh, from uh, uh, our fellow uh, Nathan, and then uh, uh, we continue with uh, the question that posed Omri. Yes, please. Okay, before 1910, uh, Korea was a unified country called Joseon Dynasty, but it was not a form of Western, Western um, notion of nation state, but it was basically a, a unified country. And the second question was, um, could you repeat the question? Sorry. I was um, the influence of China, Russia, Japan, but it, you don't have to answer it, <laughs> okay? Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, in my understanding, standings, um, of Korea has been attacked by, has affected by Japanese many times, and 
from China as well. Hmm. Okay, and uh, your answer to Omri Denur? Omni Rodu, I got the, I, I couldn't get the second question from Omni Rodu, so sorry about that. Please, yeah. Omri, can you uh, give, can you uh, tell it again in a, by summarizing your question, your mm -hmm. subject, please? Yeah. I was asking about the idea of North Korea as a uh, socialist paradise, mm -hmm. like you presented, in the sense that it is kind of a positive utopia, trying to, you know, uh, be uh, the main, like, central ideology uh, of the new state. Uh, whether this has to do with the split between the north and the south in the sense that the north Kim Il Sung and so on uh, uh, wanted to uh, determine this ideology as the positive uh, idea okay for the new state and the south uh, rejected it or didn't even want to have any kind of central ideology for you know the new state at all. Mm. Yeah, I think the Kim Jong Un's or Kim Il Sung's utopia to, for their nation, for their state was um, on the one hand, it is the propaganda for their people, because in the Kim Il Sung era, the economy was very uh, economy was not that good, so they should present, represent and present the new vision of the country so, so that people can be mobilized um, toward that goal of the nation. And the, in Kim Jong-un era, the utopian ambition was a little bit changed because they are pursuing to be a, a kind of pursuing a normalization of the country. And at the same time, they want to maintain the, their country as independent. So, um, so now it looks like uh, North Korea pursues to achieve a name, of, name or title of a state reinforcing its patriotism. So normalization of the state in the Kim Jong Un is crucial and key factor uh, to promote their ideology. Uh, whereas South Korea, we don't have any, yeah, that kind of vision. But every regimes have have yeah those kinds of blue, blueprints uh, and visions of their country, but. Uh, we don't agree with that kind of positive yeah, utopia, but we are observing how North Korea is moving on these days and changing on the world stage. Thank you. Okay, and uh, now we have a, a question from uh, Facebook. Uh, Saba Stavro is an historian from Cyprus and he asks, uh, how uh, cultural di diplomacy has been developed during the Kim, Kim Jong-un era. And uh, I would add also if there is any change in this matter, in this uh, subject on how North, North Korea is presenting itself abroad. Uh, during the previous era, vis-a-vis -vis the era that we are uh, having now. I would also like to tell to all the friends and the fellows that the next round will be the last of the questions. So if you have any other, please uh, tell, 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 uh, write down in the chat and we are going to discuss your questions. So this, this is the a question that comes from Facebook. 
about oh. the cultural di diplomacy of North Korea during cultural the diplomacy. Kim Jong-un era. Cultural diplomacy about during Kim Jong-un era. Yeah, about diplomacy, I'm not the you know, proper one to answer this question, but culturally looking at the um, North Korean media scapes today, the North Korean official media media reveals uh, um, more, yeah, they are attempting to engender more connectedness with the outside world and they are, they are representing themselves as a noble country and, and North Korean official media reveals a kind of high reform of patriotism and nationalism and which data puts is loyalty to the nation and loyalty to the state. Um, about the cultural diplomacy, maybe I think the I think um, when when we when he, when I when I when I'm observing and seeing the yeah you know, their Facebook pages and Instagram pages, I think uh, this is kind of a uh, kind of a public diplomacy as well as yes. Trump's. Yeah, Trump uses Twitter and as other yes, other it is a part of it. countries. Yes, it is a part yeah. of it. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you see any difference mm -hmm. between the past uh, or in in the last two yeah, years? Compared, compared with the previous regime, Kim Jong Il regime, uh, they are more open to the outside world now, and they okay. are presenting and propagandizing their regime actively and positively mm -hmm. and and something last may if i if i can understand well now that the trump ad, trump ad, 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 ad administration is at the end of its time mm -hmm. uh, and uh, we saw those meetings that they had in vietnam south uh, uh, north korea with the us and the president trump in vietnam uh, during, I think it was last year. Uh, mm -hmm. What is the legacy of President Trump now in North Korea after this kind of moves that they have done? And how do they look in North Korea? What's going to happen uh, with the new uh, pre president in 2021? If you have an idea of what's going on in the media, since it is your um, uh, expertise, uh, the me the me the media of North Korea. Uh when when I yeah when I look at the media scapes in the North Korea, um, they are waiting for the this tradition time traditional time, like how a new president would be yeah treat treat them and how the policy would be changed. But, and one thing I can add here uh, about the legacy of Trump, um, before Trump's, uh, before the summit meetings uh, in 2018 and 2019, that Trump was demonized as a warmonger at the, in the North Korean media, but after Afterwards, the criticism was, has been decreased dramatically, and they don't mention that much of criticism toward both um, South Korea and United States today. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so at the end of the day, Trump uh, ad administration was considered as uh, friendly or less hostile in North Korea, if I understand well. Uh, uh, I, I, these days they don't mention much about, yeah, Trump or, yeah, United States. Uh, mm -hmm. So it is a silence. So si mm -hmm. silence is good instead of non-silent of the past. Maybe they are waiting. Yeah. Maybe they are waiting. Observing what, what is happening and what is going on there. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, if I can understand well, uh, all the questions are answered and uh, the meeting 
uh, has concluded. It was, I hope you had a good time. Thank you very much, Do Dr. Choi from Seoul that you have been with us for uh, some one hour and a half. And uh, thank you all for being with us. Thank you uh, to everybody who viewed us on uh, Facebook.